There are many different types of oysters that can be found around the world. Today, the largest oyster fisheries are found in the Gulf of Mexico. Here in Sanibel, Florida, oyster reefs are composed of the eastern oyster, Chrysostria virginica, in oyster reefs where hundreds and thousands of oysters create a habitat that supports a tremendous amount of biodiversity. Oyster reefs can be found in intertidal and subtidal zones, which means they can be occasionally exposed or always submerged. Oysters live in brackish water, which has a lower salinity than seawater. Juvenile oysters are called spat, and they require a hard substrate to grow on, typically adult oyster shells. Over time, oysters pile up on top of each other, creating complex vertical structures, which provide a habitat that has a greater surface area than bare ground. This provides shelter and safety for many small developing estuarian species. Oysters are filter feeders. To eat, they suck in water, allowing detritus, plankton, and other particles to become stuck in their gills. Then, they spit out clean water and consume the particles as food. Oysters improve water quality by increasing the clarity of the water and by removing excess nutrients which cause algae blooms. An individual oyster can filter 1 to 34 liters of water in one hour. Oysters are ecosystem engineers that prevent the shoreline from eroding due to wave and boat wake action and storm surges. They also improve the quality of water which in turn promotes healthier seagrass beds. The large amount of biodiversity that is supported by oyster beds makes them an ideal feeding ground for larger fishes and birds. Sustainable oyster fisheries provide long-term jobs and many people around the world enjoy eating oysters. This makes oysters economically important in the Gulf of Mexico and in other areas with large oyster fisheries. The oyster reefs we have today represent only a fraction of past global populations. A variety of threats have caused 85% of oyster reefs to disappear worldwide. The overharvesting of oysters leads to a loss of vertical structure and complexity of oyster reefs. Oyster reefs can be destroyed by the development of shipping lanes and are harmed by pollution that comes from developed land. Boat wakes damage oyster reefs by stirring up sediments and interfering with filter feeding and larval sediment. Boat props can displace living and dead oysters when dragged along the bottom in shallow areas. Fresh water releases, like those from Lake Okeechobee, can cause salinity levels to drop dangerously low for oysters. Low salinity leads to less fertilization success and higher juvenile mortality. On the other hand, withholding water leads to high salinity levels, which leads to an increase in susceptibility to the disease caused by the parasite Perkinsis marinus and higher predation rates. Oysters are threatened in many different ways and in many different parts of their life cycles. Oysters start out as males and become females when their body size increases. Females release 2 to 115 million eggs, making a large body size advantageous for the energy required for this process. Oysters are triggered to release their eggs and sperm into the water column when water temperatures warm above 68 degrees Fahrenheit, usually peaking in May to October. Once an egg is fertilized, the larva begins to develop within 24 hours. The larva, also known as villager, swims around for about two weeks before settling down on a hard substrate, such as nearby oysters. Juvenile oysters are called spat. This stage occurs once the oyster has found a place to settle. This will be the location where the oyster spends the rest of its life, which can be up to 20 years long. If the villager does not have a place to land, it will not survive. For this reason, the relatively recent decrease in the amount of oysters makes it more difficult for oyster populations to rebound. Although only 15% of the original oyster population remains, efforts to restore oyster reefs are being undertaken. Oyster reef restoration creates a habitat that encourages the settlement of spat. This is done by collecting discarded oyster shells from restaurants and attaching them to mats or putting them in bags. This is a community effort and requires the help and dedication of many individuals. Next, the bags and mats are placed in locations that are suitable for oyster reefs. 
These areas are usually in estuaries where salinity levels are lower than the ocean, but higher than fresh water. Often, locations for oyster reef restoration are chosen based on where oysters have been depleted. Successful oyster reef restoration improves local water quality and creates a new habitat to support fish, invertebrates, and other wildlife.